Hey everybody, Wayne here. In today's Let's Play, I'm going to do a complete playthrough of Rommel's War, designed by Derek Croxton and published by Worthington Publishing. Rommel's War takes place from April 1941 to January of 1942 in the North African Campaign. It is a two-player block war game with rules for solitaire play. I'll do a complete overview of the game, and then I'll dive into the actual playthrough. So, let's go down to the table. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give a rules and game overview um, with a game that's on turn 5 of 10, so right in the middle of a game. Um, I will then reset and start the playthrough from the beginning. Okay, so Realms War, again, April 41 through January 42. You can see the 10 turn track up here. It is a block war game, so units will be concealed, right? They will have their face down or face, you know, face um, towards the other player. But there are solitaire rules in the game. Now, they're not a complete solitaire opponent. They're more of solitaire kind of guidelines that influence combat um, primarily. And so just keep that in mind as you watch this and as you watch me play. All right. So in Rommel's War, right, the Axis forces are going to start in El Aguila over here. And apologies if I mispronounced that. Um, you're going to have the Commonwealth forces Alexandria over here, they're going to have a uh, garrison in Tobruk, and then I believe it's Benghazi and maybe Machili here. So at the beginning, um, the Axis are going to go ahead and start first. Each turn, you're going to receive reinforcements. Other than the very first turn, the Axis do not receive reinforcements. They start with a larger group of units on the board here. Um, but each turn, other than that, you receive reinforcements, which you get two units out of this force pool. So again, the first turn the axis wouldn't, but in the middle of a game like this, say I went to the next turn, they would get units out of the force pool. Units in the force pool are kept face down, so you never know exactly what units you're gonna get. You also do that with startup. You never know what units are gonna be um, at the very beginning of the startup, the setup, and then you don't know what you're gonna get along the way. It goes for both sides. Um, you place them at your home base. So again, the axis over here in the west, the allies, the Commonwealth over here on the east, you're then going to draw one of these initiative cards. These initiative cards, each turn, and it's, again, it's going to be random, are going to either give you no effect, they're going to give, there's going to be a number one, and it's going to give you one additional move, or add plus one to an attack, or, and I don't have any out right now, but a two, which adds plus two to one attack. These cards, depending, you never know what you're going to get that turn. You can't save them from turn to turn, so literally it is that turn, you're going to get your reinforcements, you're going to flip that initiative card and you're going to know, hey, am I going to have the ability to choose an additional move or a plus to my attack? Or am I going to have no effect that turn, which that could decide, you know, help you uh, decide what you're actually going to do that turn. Okay. So after you draw your initiative card, you have your moves in combat. You get, besides any additional movement from the initiative card, you get two movements. How are movements handled? Each movement activates a group of units at a particular location. You can move up to four ground units at once, or you can move all of your air units at once. You can't move um, ground and air units together, and you can't move more than four. You can move less than four, right? So one to four. What you would do is you'd activate an area. You go ahead and begin movement. Now there's along the main road here, the Via Balba or Balbia. Um, which you can see has straight lines, and then there's trails. You're going to get bonus movement on the road. You're not going to get bonus movement on the trails. So the trails, you can attempt flanking maneuvers. However, you're not. You're only going to follow the intrinsic move on your blocks. Now, speaking of the units themselves, so we can go ahead and look at a couple of the Axis units here. And there are Italian, German, and Italian here. Obviously, so pretty standard NATO symbology here, right? So you can see you have your infantry, you have your tanks, infantry. Um, you have a strength point on the left. You have the national symbol, and then you have a intrinsic movement on the right. And then you have the name, name of that division or unit underneath the symbol. The intrinsic movement is what I talked about when I mentioned moving either. You can use intrinsic on the road, or you can use it on the trails. But for that bonus movement, that is completely separate from whatever is printed on here. So units, although they may only have a listed movement of one, two, or up to three for aircraft, they potentially could, you could be moving, if you follow the road and there's no enemy units in the way, could be moving five, six spaces. So 
Okay, so you're moving, right? So you have two moves, you're activating groups of units, you're gonna move them from an area to another area. You can't drop off units on the way, they have to move as a group. After that, and you can do your movements, you can do movement, resolve the combat location, or you can do movement, do another movement to bring additional units in, right? It's because you only move four at once, right? That four may not be enough to crack the defenses in an area. Say you're attacking Tobruk and it happens to have a strong allied defense, you may want to be able to you know, bring in more units to try to do your attack. Attacks are very simple. Um, now, there is a process where... You know, if it was a two-player game, you would be revealing units. Defender chooses kind of what they want to reveal. Attackers are going to automatically be revealed. Um, I believe the attackers are revealed. You know, maybe don't quote me on that one. Um, I, I'm playing it solitaire. So I what I do is I leave the defenders, and this is kind of partially the game, partially me. <clears throat> when I play solitaire, I leave the defenders in a stack. So like this. So if, say I'm attacking and I'm playing as the Axis this half turn, I would move. I would move my units there, saying, okay, I'm launching an attack. Then I would reveal the face-up units there. I wouldn't reveal them all ahead of time because I want that to be a surprise, right, as the attackers. I may have an idea what they got, but I don't know exactly what is in that location. Um, for the solitaire play, the rulebook does mention, hey, play with the, the units face-up. So it makes sense there. It works there. Um, again, I just like to kind of stack them a little bit. So that way, I have, as the again, as the attacker, you, you don't really have a perfect idea. You don't have that perfect intelligence viewpoint, right? Okay, um, so you attack. Now, defenders can possibly retreat based on movement, right? If all defender movement is higher than the slowest attacking unit. So for instance, I had a stack of armor here and for the Commonwealth, and I was going to attack with armor and infantry because it was only one space away. And then I realized, well, with the armor, the if, because the infantry are slower, the armor would have been able to retreat without being engaged. So I just sent in armor, I remember if I sent an airstrike or not with them because the aircraft cannot attack alone they have to attack with ground units um, I think I just sent in a bunch of tanks and then maybe a recon unit to kind of just back them up add a little bit extra strength and they were successful again now during combat what, what do I mean by successful well there you see a die here the die is only used for the solo rules that's actually not used in two-player the variable strength or the idea right of who would win combat is all based on the deceit is based on the fog of war, right? Not knowing what units are where, flipping and revealing them at the last minute when it's too late to change it, and then resolving it. Obviously, solitaire, it's a little, make it a little bit harder because you're going to have a better idea overall of what certain strength of certain areas is. So, um, and by the way, like I said, so there's no, no dice rolling in traditional combat. It is just you compare the total strength points of the attacker to defender. Whoever has higher is going to eliminate one of the opposing forces units and they're going to have to retreat based on certain rules and then uh, defender wins ties of course and attacker retreats defender retreats again there are certain rules covering retreat which we will cover when we actually play the game now what does it die for well in the solo game and the game comes with if you didn't see my recon unboxing the game comes with a separate solo rule kind of cheat sheet you're going to roll that die for each attack um, if you roll a six the attack is canceled. <laughs> so it's straight up, oh, it's not going to happen, which obviously can be a huge thing. If you built up this attack, you're planning, the attack is straight up canceled. On a one to five, the game is going to tell you, hey, for a certain amount of defending units, which is one to two or three to four or five or more, you're going to be adding part of that die roll. Now, one to two defending units, it's only add half a die roll. So if you rolled four, you would just add two. But Keep that in mind. So you roll four, right? And it adds two. That five now becomes a seven. You may think that's not a big deal. It is. It can be a huge swing because you, as the attacker, you're not always going to have, right, a huge numerical superiority. So you may be attacking with, say, you have 10 attacking strength and you believe that stack only has maybe seven, maybe eight. But I, I know I, I'm more, I got more. Pretty sure. And you attack. Yep, you do have more. But you roll. And next thing you know, you even get a tie. As the attacker, you're repulsed, you're gonna lose a unit, and you're gonna to have to retreat back to your attacking location. Now that was for one to two defending units. If there's three to four, you had the whole uh, <clears throat> roll of the die. So if it had been that four, you had plus four to def your, the defender's strength points, and five or more, you had the whole die, plus you roll again and add half of it. So you can see as the more units you have defending, the more this can be a big swing. It can only add a little bit, or it can add quite a bit to your defensive strength. Um, there are no other true solitaire rules of guiding each side. 
but you know looking at the board here so again we have the axis coming out of the west right the commonwealth over here in the east you're going to be fighting over tobruk and then trying to fight over each side's base um, which again alexandra and al -Kiba. now you know tobruk it's going to be a tough nut to crack for the axis and then capturing the base is going to be exceptionally difficult so, for example, my last game, I made some tactical maneuverings, uh, very poor ones, by the Commonwealth. And unlike historically, the Axis were able to seize Tobruk. Ah, going to achieve a supreme victory here, huh? They actually did not. So my end of the game played out, and I was attacking, actually, the Allied set up their defense at El Alamein, and the Axis were repulsed. Now, it was technically an Axis victory, because they did capper, capture Tobruk, but it was not a decisive victory, because Alexandria remained unconquered. So it's really going to revolve a lot around Tobruk. Um, when looking at that sequence of play, as I mentioned the two moves, resolving combat, there's an end phase, recovery and resolve combat. So units will become disrupted when they are, you know, retreated. So you have that stack that say attacks and one is eliminated, they fail their attack. One's eliminated, the rest are, would be um, disrupted, which in the two player game, right, they're flipped upside down. Uh, and then what I do, though, in the solo game is I just move them to the side. Before, at the start of this video, I had two units here. They had were disrupted because they had attacked here and failed. Um, so I had them pointed to the side. At the end of the turn, you're going to have recovery and resolve supply. Recovery is if a unit did not attack on your half of the turn. So if it's the end of that turn where they were disrupted, you was your attacker, they would not recover. They would have to recover your next turn. If they had been the, the defensive and then um, they were disrupted from that, then yes, at the end of your turn, they would recover and just go back to right side up. Also, you're gonna check supply. Fairly simple most of the time, but just watch out. Units can get cut off occasionally, although I, I find it pretty rare. There are enough avenues. Supply for the Axis, Alagela is all they have supply from, which again, historically, right, the supply lines for the Axis were stretched very thin. Um, the Allies can also supply from Tobruk or from Alexandria, although the rules for Tobruk prevent units from launching ranging attacks from here. They can only be one space away. So it does prevent Tobruk from, if even if the Axis have bypassed it, it prevents it from being a true, as long as it's cut off here, prevents it being kind of a true base of supply to actually get to the underbelly of the Axis and, and sneak an attack. Um, there's also rules, special rule for you being able to move a unit um, from using an entire move, right, which you move up to four, but if you do sea transport, you can move one unit from Alexandria to Tobruk. Again, that would be useful if the Axis have cut off Tobruk, surrounded it, cut it off here, making a push on Alexandria. You can still keep some units back here at Tobruk, make sure that does not fall. Because at the end of the game, like I mentioned before, Tobruk is kind of the key on at least a regular victory. The Axis control it at the end, they're going to get a regular victory. If the Allies control it, they're going to get a regular victory. If either side's base falls, then that other side gets a decisive victory. Okay, I think that was a pretty comprehensive overview. Honestly, I don't even know if I was going to go that in-depth. And now I'm going to reset the board. You guys are going to see it in action, how I play Solitaire. Like I said, I pretty much follow how the rulebook suggests the Solitaire by showing revealed units. It, and then with the dice rolling for the combat, it is different then. It makes the game different than I imagined the two-player would be. But... It does seem to work pretty well solitaire, even for a block game, just playing revealed and then having that die. It does create chaos, but it does, it creates just this feel of like, hey, you don't really know what the defender has going on. And I kind of like that because I feel like that's sometimes more historically accurate than anything. Okay, let's go reset the board and get into the full playthrough. All right, I wanted to go ahead and finish setup on camera for you guys. So everything is mostly reset, but I'm going to place out the units. The only thing I wanted to mention was that the Axis do have two units that have an extra hit to them. So the 15th Division, Panzer Division here, and then the 21st Panzer Division, which I have on the turn track is Future Reinforcements, they can take two hits, right? The first one is going to reduce, so you're going to replace this block with this reduce block. Um, and then when that's, that's eliminated, then that division is eliminated from the board. Every other unit is just going to have one, one hit, and they are done. So keep that in mind. All right, so the Axis are going to have, they have this uh, Panzer division they get to start with, and then they get to draw three, three random, and I, you know, you can see they're face down, which is how they stay. You mix them up and put them out here. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to get. Never really know. All right, so it looks like all Italian to start with. 
um, right? Italian uh, tank division, some infantry, and more infantry over here. So let's go ahead and place them in Alagela. And then for the Commonwealth, they get four as well. Uh, I'll try to mix them up a little bit here. However, there's going to be spread out, and this is how the axis can be more successful to start off with. So one will go in Alexandria, one will go in Tobruk, one in Machili, and one in Benghazi. So looking at the units here, we can see things, well, infantry, right, obviously. Recon, um, anti-tank, and then more recon. Not a great mix to start with for the Commonwealth, unfortunately. I think they're going to go ahead and put anti-tank in Benghazi. They'll put this infantry here in Tobruk, and a recon in Machili, and a recon in Alexandria to start with. Give them a little bit, maybe possibly a little bit more of a defense um, in Benghazi, depending on what they're attacked by. But the odds that they're attacked by, you know, tanks, recon, or aircraft, which gets them, lets them use a larger number, right? You can see that there's only the two for the combat, but then you see a four in that number. That would be against tanks, recon, and aircraft. Okay, so that is setup is now completed. So we're going to start turn one. Axis go first each turn, but again, the very first turn, the axis don't get any additional reinforcements. They just are going to act with the units on the board. The allies will get reinforcements on their half of the turn. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into the playthrough. All right, turn one, April 1941, War in North Africa. Let's get going here. Sequence of play is on the board helpfully along with the movement factors. Um, sequence of play, receive reinforcements and place at base. Again, the Axis do not get any reinforcements the very first turn. Too bad for them. We do get to draw an initiative card though. So let's go ahead and draw one. No effect. Okay, so no extra movement, no bonus to combat, nothing. And you never know what you're gonna get. And I, I like that part of the game. It really adds that, you know, the question mark each turn. Is that a turn you're gonna be able to push an offensive, remove extra units or not? You never know. And or well, your opponent wouldn't know either. All right, now we make our two moves and resolve any combats. So each move, right, you can activate up to four units. We only have four, and you can do things like you can activate just a couple, move them, activate a couple more, move them. And you move, that way you have different locations. Remember, you also can't drop off, so just keep that in mind. That's a big part of it as well. I already have a good idea what I want to do as the axis, so we're going to go ahead for our first move. Let's activate both tank divisions here, right, the 15th Panzer Division, and then Ariette, the Italian tanks. Let's go ahead and get them moving. So we're going to move them from El Aguila, right, our, our headquarters, our base, to Aga Dubai, and then up to Benghazi. Now, it, it's not coming into effect right now because the movement was only two areas. But remember, on the road here, right, so we can see the sort of the double line, primarily along the coast with a little bit jutting out into El Adem you get bonus movement. You get to move four extra on the road, and then you start taking off intrinsic movement, the movement on the block, whether that's continuing on the road, excuse me, or going on the trails. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes you can potentially have a, quite a big move. Okay, so they're gonna move right there, and they're gonna go ahead and engage with the anti-tank unit there. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do my second move. I'm gonna move both infantry here, Let's see. Yep, so they're going to go to Aga Dubai, which is one movement, but a bonus movement on the road. And then they're going to leave the road and go to Machili here, which uses up their one intrinsic. So now they can no longer move anyway. But when you encounter an enemy force in an area, you have to stop at that area. Okay, now we're going to resolve combat. First off, let's go ahead and resolve the combat here up at Benghazi. So we have five, six, seven, eight, nine total attack. They have four, because we're attacking with tanks, right? So they get the higher value anti-tank. They're going to go ahead and roll for the solo rules. Remember, on a six, the attack is canceled. And on a one to five, they get a bonus. So they would rather have a six, because then it completely gets canceled, um, because they're not going to be able to earn enough. So they rolled a four. One to two defending units. Defender adds half of the die, roll rounded down, right? So that's two. So four, five, six. Nine versus six. They lose that fight. Um, and then I didn't, I sk kind of skipped over because I, I knew right away, which was my mistake. I should have explained it. Um, you know, when you are showing the unit saying, okay, this combat is going to happen, you then can conduct a retreat before combat. If the defender, right, if all defending units are faster than the slowest attacking units, they may retreat. Attacker may also retreat if all attacking units are faster than all defending units. Um, 
And then there's something for unrevealed units, but with when you play solitaire and you're revealing them, it doesn't apply um, to the solo gameplay. Okay, so in this case, he could not have retreated because both tank units have a two. Now, if I had sent one of the infantry divisions along with them, he wouldn't be able to retreat because he would be faster than that slowest defending unit. All right, he's unable to retreat. Nine versus six on the attack strength. Defender loses, so he is actually eliminated straight away. And the attackers were successful, and they've taken Benghazi. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and check the combat down here at Machili. We have four and two, six versus one on the recon. Obviously, though, this recon, he is not going to fight, right? He is going to retreat before combat. Um, he is, his movement is two. He's a recon unit. Moving to one, moving to one. No problem there. He's definitely going to go ahead and retreat. He is going to retreat. Mm, let's see, where should he go? All right, so he's going to retreat, and so he retreats the, he has two movement points, right? So he has to retreat two areas. So he's going to retreat to al and he's going to retreat up to Tobruk. He is then disorganized. Um, again, in the two-player game where you're, you know, hiding facings, hiding your units and such, he'd be flipped back face down if he had been revealed. However, in the solo game, that doesn't apply. Therefore, I just, it doesn't, I don't think it's suggested in the rules, but I just flip him to the side, just showing, hey, he is now disorganized. Disorganized units can defend full strength, they can move, retreat, they just, until they recover, they can't initiate or be part of an attack. Okay, so they were successful. The forces here took Machili. All right, so the Axis, they made their two moves, resolve combat. Now the end phase, recovery, which, right, talking about things like that, but it's for the phasing player, in which case now is the Axis. Um, and then resolving supply, they are full supply um, for the Axis. If they're ever cut off, you eliminate units that don't are not under supply. So supply, although usually easy, is very, very important to make sure that you have your units in supply. Okay, that's it for the first half of the turn. Now we go to the Commonwealth's half of the turn. First turn, April of 41. Receive reinforcements and place at base. Aha, they do get reinforcements. So go ahead and draw randomly here. They're going to get an infantry division, and anti-tank as well. Let's go ahead and place both those over here in Alexandria. Now, draw our initiative card. See what we get. Bonus for combat, bonus for move. Okay, so here we have um, one additional move or plus one to one attack. I don't know if they're going to be conducting any attacks at the moment, but definitely like the additional, possibly like the additional move. I guess we'll see. At the early part of the game here, you may not have enough units to take advantage of it, which in which case, hey, that's just part of the game, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and use this card for, well, we won't use a card first. We'll just use our regular movement. So first one, let's go ahead and move. Let's see how far away are they? Should we leave anybody behind? No, let's go ahead and move them all. So this stack here, they can move four and then potential an additional one because of the infantry. However, these faster units moving with him will be slowed down ultimately. So let's move one, two, three, four. Again, they get four bonus by following the road. And then that additional one, they'll just move right into Tobruk here um, and join the garrison there already. For a second move, if we wanted to, right, maybe we can move these. These units have already moved, so they're here, they're done. We have one, two units left, but he can't launch an attack because he's disorganized. So he's not going to go out on his own at all. So he's going to go ahead and sit tight here. Um, this bonus card, unfortunately, we can't keep it. We can't use an extra or anything like that. So it is a waste because we're not going to launch any attacks. We just want to go ahead and recover, make sure we have a solid garrison at Tobruk, and see what we can do next turn. So we'll discard that. Now we go to the end phase, recovery and resolve, uh, resolve supply. Obviously, everyone's in supply right now. Recovery, this is where we get to go ahead and flip it over like that and put it there. Again, I like to stack them in such a way that kind of minimizes what you can see. That way, when you're on the attack, you know what you're doing, you can see. And you have a, you know, you have a general idea of what the defender has, but you don't have the exact count of their strength points, which again, I think is very, helps the game and it's very accurate, right? You may have an idea what they have, but you never know exactly what they have. Okay, um, recovery and supply, end phase is done. So that is the end of turn one, April of 41. We're moving on to turn two, May of 1941.
All right. May of 41, turn two. Axis go first. Receive reinforcements and place a base. So they get to get two units. Reveal them here. We have Italian infantry. Italian infantry. I get a lot of Italians to start off with. I guess they're just eager to get into the fight. Let's go and place them at Alagila. All right, now we have our drawing initiative cards. Who we get? Is anything good? Anything good? Oh, one additional move or plus one one attack. This could come in handy because I have an idea of what I want to do. We'll see if this will happen. So let's start off, um, make our two moves, right? Resolve any combat or potentially three. Let's go ahead. I'm going to move the, I'm thinking I'm doing all of us out on Tobruk, attack it right away to see what we can do. So our tanks up here in Benghazi, they move, remember, bonus movement on the roads. One, two, three. So they are in there. Now we have our infantry here. They can use their intrinsic on the trails here. They can go this way and then use the bonus movement on the road. They could go this way and do it. Doesn't matter. One, but then they have the bonus movement on the road and then go ahead and move up and attack as well. Let's see, what are we at here for the attackers? For the axis, we got nine, 10, 11, 15. Is that enough? I don't know if that's enough. Could these, could the infantry here make it if I use this additional move or should I use it for the plus one attack? Let's see, one, two, three, four, Zala, and then they have bonus one, they could move. Ooh, they could move in the attack. I think I want it for that. So I'm gonna use my Rommel card here, my initiative card for its one additional move and spend that. And they're gonna move here, 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 and boom, join the attack at Tobruk. So we're launching a big old attack on Tobruk right away. Let's see if we can crack this nut. Let's unload on uh, these defenders here and just see what we got. Oh, anti-tank grab on him. All right, so let's add them up here first before we begin. So attacker is gonna have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, versus the defender has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So they're down by eight. So it doesn't look good for the allies here. Um, down by eight doesn't look good. Let's go ahead and roll though to see what what they get for bonus defense. Now there is five defending units, so the defender's gonna add the whole die result and then roll again. So let's see what they get. So they have five, so they add five, and then they get to roll again and add that. Three, they add half of this result rounding down, so it's only one. So you get a total of six. Six, what was it again? Six, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, versus what was it? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, just enough. Well, two more, but you can see how the die roll made what was, you know, completely um, un, not close to very close. And Tobruk does not have an intrinsic defense. So you can see Elagela and then Alexandria have an intrinsic defense. If they had it, it would have helped out a lot. Tobruk does not. Okay, so attackers were successful. So defenders, they get to they lose a unit, which they get to pick. So they go and lose uh, one of these weaker recon units, and then they have to retreat. They're disorganized and retreat. Um, they retreat the number of spaces that is their movement. So infantry would move, say, to Bardia, and recon and anti tank would move to Salum, and the Axis. Oh, and then they are obviously disorganized because they lost the battle there. Axis are going to go ahead and secure Tobruk, which is a pretty big deal because now holding Tobruk, even if they don't crack Alexandria, that is worth a Axis victory at the end of the game. I like to stack them up a little bit just so I have an exact idea of what is there. All right, the Axis, they had their two moves resolve their combat, end phase, recovery, and, and resolve supply. Supply looks good. Um, don't need to recover at all because they won the battle. So they're good. They're going to end their turn. So it goes over to the allies. Allies half of the turn. Receive their reinforcements. So again, that's two. Reveal them. We have infantry and armor. Put them in the base. Draw an initiative card. No effect this turn, unfortunately. Make our two moves and resolve combat. So um, looking at the board, you know, obviously... Allies took a big blow here. They can't retake it right away. That's not going to happen. But they can maybe put themselves in a position to do some damage here. Hopefully next turn. Maybe next turn, right? So let's see what they can do. So they're going to go ahead, do a movement with the um, 
two units here that are in Alexandria, the armor and then the infantry. One, two, three, four. And then, should they move them separate or should they just try to, actually they're, yeah, they're gonna stay. Oh, I know, I'm trying to, trying to, trying to figure out, should crack, try to crack this nut, right? Okay, let's go ahead and actually move them. Continue moving to Eladim El because I want to try to cut off supply. Now, remember the um, Tobruk supply depends, but I want to make sure to see what I can get in a position to is the allies to cut off supply. I think that's what I want to do. Hmm. What do you think guys think? Should I move back? No, let's go ahead. Yeah, no, let's do that. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, that was one move. The other move, I'm going to go ahead and just combine these forces here. And then that's it. We're not going to do any combats. End phase, recovery, and supply. In supply from Alexandria still. Let's go ahead and recover these units so they are fresh and ready to go. Okay, that is it for turn two, May of 41. Let's go on to turn three, June of 1941. All right, let's go ahead and begin turn three, June of 41. Axis go first. And by the way, as we're getting our reinforcements... Um, I went and double checked the rules because I didn't think they did. Yep, the Axis do not gain supply from Tobruk. They don't get a sea supply. That's only for the Allies. So the Axis have to be careful not getting their supply cut off or this whole stack of units can be eliminated. Be very careful. So it's for the Axis, it's, you know, fighting over Tobruk, but also making sure that, hey, you keep the supply lines open, which, again, is a very integral part, was an integral part of the North African campaign. All right, so we got an aircraft. Um, here we have uh, JG-27, nice attack, but remember aircraft have kind of different rules with movement and combat, um, and then a recon unit. So the Axis here, now they're going to draw their initiative card. Oh, they do get one, which they can use for sure, because they do not want to get cut off here. They don't want anything crazy to happen. They want to go ahead and try to try to fight, um, try to fight these um, the allies, make sure they don't get them cut off. So let's see here. So we have... Recon and our aircraft. Hmm. Well, let's look what we got here in Tobruk. Because again, like I said, we want to get a good fight going on here, but we don't want to lose Tobruk. So let's go ahead. The axes are going to and I send so activate one movement from, from Tobruk here. They're gonna send this Italian infantry. By the way, a couple German units. Germans finally show up to North Africa here. Um German, or uh, excuse me, Italian infantry. Let's send in, um, yeah, let's send in, uh, shoot, Italian armor. And I think that'll be it from Tobruk. And then for the second move, let's go ahead and activate the aircraft here. He can go ahead and move because you have to do aircraft separately from ground units. One, and he has three movement. One, two, three. Um, the aircraft, I believe, don't get to use the road bonus unless they're with units, but it was three anyway, so it's just fine. So that'll be a total, and that'll be, I think that's all they're going to do. And then they're going to use, we're going to use our uh, initiative card here, the plus one for the attack on the attack. So four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Versus four, five, six, seven. Now you look, see, can they retreat at all? Unfortunately, for the defenders, they can't um, because the they have that um, infantry. The fourth Indian division here, infantry, is going to keep them from being able to retreat. Um, well, I guess they have a tank on the attacker anyway, so wouldn't been able to. So, okay. Well, he would have been faster than him, so they could have, but he's equal speed. So yeah, we figured it out. Okay, again, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve versus four, five, six, seven. 12 versus 7, but let's go ahead and roll the solo die. A 6. The attack is canceled. Oh my gosh. So the attack will not happen. It is canceled. What that does when the attack is canceled is the attacking units are going to retreat to the places they came from. They are not disrupted, right? It wasn't an attack that got disrupted or anything like that. Um but it is going to prevent el -Adim from falling and the allies prevent them from losing a unit there. So 
Lucky for them, not so lucky for the Axis. Again, I like that. I like the die roll of having, you know, six your attack is canceled and then one to five right where that can influence and can add to the attacker, or excuse me, the defender's strength. Okay, so after that failure of a campaign, um, failure of a battle here, there's end phase, right? Yep, recovery and resolve. Um, resolve supply. Units are in supply here. Everyone's in supply. No need to recover because when a, a attack is canceled like that, they, the attackers are not disrupted. They just have to retreat to where they came from. That's the end of the Axis turn, so half of the turn. So now we go to the Allies. Receive reinforcements. Let's see. Infantry, 7th Australian, and then 1st Armor. Put them here in Alexandria. And check their initiative card. Ooh, there we go. Hmm. Intriguing options here. So let's go ahead. The, I can tell you right now, I got a pretty good idea what I want to try to do. I want to cut off supply for the Axis to see if we can get that Tobruk garrison and force their uh, surrender. Flipping, flipping the tables. Yeah, allies are flipping the tables on the Axis. I love it. Okay, so we have a pretty good, let's see what do we have here. I don't want to sacrifice too much strength there though. Uh, I know, like, uh, where to move them? Let's do, let's do movement here at Alexandria. One, two, three, four, and we'll stop there. Yep, we'll stop there. Um, we will do our second move, which we will. Oh shoot! Is that enough? Is that gonna be enough? Oh, I think it's gonna be enough. Hang on. We can do. No, we can do. Oh, I don't think we're gonna be able to cut it off this turn. Close, but no cigar, maybe. So here, and then. Second move. Oh, we can. Second move. We will. Take, move, what do we got here? Move this recon here and here. And now they're cut off. Try to beef up the defenses, keep moving. He'll move those with as well, so. All right, so boom. And that was what? That was two movements, right? One, two. Yep, so that was two moves. I didn't even need to use the card. I'm not going to attack at all. You know, it's they're just cutting off the garrison. And that's it. Let's see what happens. So um, did their moves in combat. No combat. End phase, recovery, resolve supply. Supply looks good. Supply for the allies looks good. Now here, here we go. So discard this. Unaf unfortunately, didn't need to use it. Um, next turn. We've ended June, right? Turn three, June of 41. Turn four, July of 41. Let's see what the Axis is going to do with their forces in Tilburg cut off. All right, July of 41. Axis go first. They get their reinforcements here. Get a German recon, Italian aircraft. Placed in Alagala. All right, so they got to crack. They got to crack the nut here. They got to open up. Um, supply lines to Tobruk. It's very, very important they do that, but they can't leave Elagela undefended. So it's a good sort of, what are they gonna do? Um, so reinforcements are placed, now they draw their initiative card and they do get one, which will, which could be a big help here. We'll see how they use it. Um, let's do a breakout attempt, I think. So first move, let's get some units out of Tobruk here and to make a breakout. I think there's armor here. And again, you know, with the, once you're the attacker, show off the units. I don't mind looking at them all. I was a defender. I like to stack them, right, as we talked about. Oh, probably here we can do that. Um, oh, yeah, we got some armor here. Let's definitely try to do a breakout, uh, breakout attempt. So first move, let's send them. What do we got? It's uh, Gazala here. Let's go ahead and send them to... Gazala, just to kind of put you know, more in the rear, I feel like, right? So let's send them there. And and that was, let's see, should we send anyone else? Because I don't want to give up too much, too many defenses here at Tobruk, though. Mm. Yep, we'll leave, we'll send them and we'll leave the infantry here. 
in Tobruk. So that's one move. For a second move, let's send in, I think we can send in our aircraft to assist the attack here. So we have these aircraft, right? And Elagela, let's go ahead and send them. One, two, three, three movement. And so they will be part of this attack here. And then I'm going to... Hmm. I'm going to keep the recon units there. Um, and I'm going to use this card for the attack, to add for the attackers. So, three, four, five, nine, um, 14, plus one, right? 15 on the attack. Defenders are going to be three anti tank, because there's tanks attacking, right? So, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So. Odds are they're going to lose, but let's roll, see what happens. If they get that six again, the attack's going to be stopped. Let's see. A three. So when you have three to four defending units, you have the whole die result. So let's go ahead and recalculate that again. Three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We had three, four, five, ten, fourteen, fifteen. So attackers do carry the day, um, and there was no ability to retreat with the um, South African infantry there anyway. So attackers carry the day. So the um, allies here are going to lose a unit. They're going to pick this recon to lose. And then they will go ahead and be disrupted. And they have to retreat. The infantry has to retreat one. He retreat down to Eladim. He has to retreat two. He retreat Eladim. And then over to um, Bardia. All right. So the Axis... Here have reopened the supply lines by taking the Zala. All right. Whew. Well, a good thing for the Axis. They just held out, held a little bit of hope here um, without getting cut off and losing a bunch of units in one. So, okay. Um, that's it for the Axis. That's all they can do. So we'll go to the, let's see, we did our moves in combat. So end phase, recovery and supply. <laughs> Check supply. Whoop, what do you know? We can do supply here. Whew, wipe the sweat off the brow. We survived um, an additional month in the desert if you wanted to. So if you want to even survive instead of having a mass surrender. Okay, done with the German half of the turn. Let's go to the Allied half of the turn, July 1941 here. The Allies get their two reinforcements, which would be aircraft and tank. Ooh, good reinforcements. Place them in Alexandria, draw an initiative card. No effect, so no good card this turn, unfortunately, for them. All right, so what do they got going on here? So we have the Allies. We got decent little force here, but a disrupted unit in Bardia. Aladim, same thing. Yeah, because that's pretty strong, actually, force right there. Same thing here. They both are pretty good. They just, unfortunately, have some disrupted units. So I think what the Allies are going to do here, they're going to go ahead and bring up. So they're going to do a uh, move with the forces at Alexandria. Because right now, you know, obviously you have to worry. You don't want your base getting captured because it's game over for you. But, you know, uh, Axis are in no position to be able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and move the... Oh, it's... it's, it's uh, Shoot, I forgot it's aircraft. So it's actually going to be a separate move for him. So first move, yeah. We're going to use the two moves, I think, for both of these to get him moved up. Let's go ahead and send them both. You know, three, four, and get him moved, um, yeah, to Bardia here. I think it's all we're going to do. So no moves, no combat, no other moves, no combat. Um, and phase, recovery. So, yep, so these units are going to go ahead and get to be recovered. And resolve supply, full supply to Alexandria. Next turn, well, depending on what the Axis got going on, we may, allies may be hoping we'll be able to launch an attack against Tobruk here. So, okay, that is it for turn four, July of 41. Let's move on to turn five, August of 1941. All right, August of 41, Axis turn. They get their reinforcements. Uh, let's see what they get. German infantry and then a Italian fortification. So this is the first time I think a fortification marker has popped up, which is pretty amazing considering um, each side has, I think, two of them, two or three of them or something like that. So it's amazing they haven't popped up yet. But rules for fortification um, in the 
Two-player game, right? The units are going to be face down. So basically, and then once the defender chooses to reveal it, then it becomes a fortification, right? So it can move. It has a movement, so it can move around until it's revealed, and then it stays at that spot, right? That is now you've fortified that location. Obviously, in solo, you see it, right? It's you keep you play with the units up. So what I do is I just go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to move it around. But as soon as I decide, hey, you know, move it around, you can put it to the side like this, right? face to the left or just leave it and as soon as it gets to a certain location you know you want right you want it to be the defender go ahead and just say okay now it's defending and alarm can move it's pretty simple again there's only a couple of them so it's pretty simple just to figure out on your own saying hey i'm gonna say yep no longer move there it is staying there so anyway i just wanted to talk about the uh talk about that unit the fort um unit okay so who axis here what are they gonna do so they got Tobruk, which is good. That'll earn them a victory if they can hold out. At least a regular victory. May not be decisive, but it is a victory. But they don't want to lose. You know, they got to worry about their supply lines. The allies look pretty strong to me. You can't see all the units, right? But they look, I think they're pretty strong. So what are they going to do? How are they going to play this? Uh, let's figure that out. So and you also have to worry, by the way, you don't want to get, you know, get the end around here and have the allies do kind of a sneak attack against Alagela take it and then have that decisive victory and you know the axis are going to go ahead and be out of the out of the game here hmm let's do all right so reinforcements strong initiative card let's get that out of the way before we decide what we're going to do okay perfect wonderful additional move or plus one to an attack i do like that idea i do like that let's do it this way <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and conduct a move First move is going to be, oh, what can they go? Oh, they can only go, they go one, two, three, four, five. They can go that way. Yep, okay. So all four of these units are going to leave Alligator undefended. Oh, no. Follow the bonus on the road. One, two, three, four. And then using intrinsic movement, move to Aladim. Now, they'll all be able to fight, except for the fort, obviously. It's not having an attack. It just has on defense. Um, and then let's go ahead and with the second move. Hmm, is that three, four, five. It's only five. That's yeah, definitely not enough. Second move, let's send in. Actually, let's send in all these. Oh, the aircraft there. So let's send in these two aircraft. from Mizala. Boom. And I could do, I suppose I could do another move here or I could use the bonus. What do you guys think? Well, I guess the move makes more sense because you want to kind of overwhelm, right? So let's go ahead and do with this, the additional move, which will move the two tank divisions as well. So they're going to overwhelm the defender. <laughs> Eladim here, they have no chance unless they roll a six on that die. All right, so let's go ahead and reveal them anyway. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and they can't retreat um, because they have the infantry with them. If it was just um, the armor, he would be able to retreat, I believe, because he's faster than the at the slowest unit. Anyway, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, versus three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nineteen. So the only way the defenders can win is if they roll a six two, and it wouldn't be win; it just wouldn't have the combat. Four, they do not survive because of four with three units. They get this whole thing. Excuse me, that still puts them at 14, which was what? And they were what, 19? So defender loses. They're going to go ahead and knock out the first South African. Sorry. And then they will be disrupted. And they're going to retreat. After retreat, have retreat one. And the armor will have to retreat two. And the Axis have captured El Adim. Not a ton of strategic value, but it does start getting the idea right of maybe eliminating the, um, I'll leave the aircraft kind of, kind of separate, eliminating the whole end around and eliminating Tobruk uh, being surrounded and cut off. Possibly. I'm just, I think that the Axis have probably built some of the forces that probably don't have to worry about that, but that's where you fight the battles, right? Okay, that is it for the axis, right? Yep, so we did our moves, we did our combat, end phase, recovery, no need to recover, supply, easy trace to supply, good. Axis are done with their turn. 
go to the allies half. Allies, go ahead and grab some reinforcements here. A couple infantry divisions, 9th Australian, 5th Indian, place them in Alexandria. Draw their initiative card, no effect. Okay, let's see. Now let's see what we're going to do here. So, two moves. Tobruk looks like it may be a little bit undefended, though, depending. So this may be the time to try to try to get a movement on Tobruk. Can he reach all the way there? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, with their intrinsic. So they're going to do, let's see, I think the allies here are feeling feisty. Yep, they're going to do a send in, a, they're going to do a movement. They're going to move one movement from Bardia. One, two, three, and then four, four. Send in the anti tank as well. Wait, is the anti tank, can he do that? No, no, only on defense. Can't do an attack. So we'll send in the infantry. And remember, these units cannot be used in an attack because they are disrupted and they have to stay with themselves. They can move, but they won't be able to participate in an attack. So we'll send in these and then activate the second movement. These the units that just came in. One, two, three, four. All right, allies are going for it, trying to capture Tobruk back. Let's see if they can do it. He's back in party right here. I'll leave him there. Okay, what are the defenders got? Oh, what do we got here? So, four, five, six, um, seven, eight, nine. That is 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Attackers have 20. Defenders have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so actually, the defenders are going to need a six. That's the only way out of this, or else Tobruk is going to be recaptured by the allies. Four, they have four units, so four adds a whole result. So, what was it again? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, versus six, seven, eight, nine, fourteen, fifteen, six, seventeen, eight, nineteen, twenty. Fifteen versus twenty. Attackers carry the day. Allies celebrate. They have recaptured and liberated Tobruk. The Axis will go ahead and lose this weaker Italian infantry, and they will be disrupted and retreat. They'll retreat to Zala here. And the Allies have, again, have liberated Tobruk, and they will celebrate with much fanfare. And now they just need a strong fort to come up with. I can't believe I've only drew like one fort. That's, but that's part of the game, right? So these random, when you have the units you're randomly drawing, um, you never know exactly what units you're going to get, which I, I like that. I like that. It's not, you know, it doesn't have to follow us exact. This is exactly what's going to happen. I like the, the randomness part of it. Okay, anyway, um, and that should be, these were here, right? And he's there. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Um, so combat resolved. Allies retook to Tobruk. Good for them. End phase, recovery, resolve supply. So recovery, yep. So the 4th Indian will recover along with the 7th Armor. Supply, well, Tobruk supply, Alexander supply. Allies looking good right now. This is a good little, little fight here. A little scrum over Tobruk. I like it. So, okay. That is the end, right, of turn 5, August of 41. Let's go to turn 6. Dun, dun, dun. September of 41. All right. So... Turn six, September of 41. You notice we have the Panzer Division on the track. So the Axis automatically get 21st Panzer here as one of their reinforcements. Remember, those are two-step units. So we place that one to the side. In addition, they still get to draw one, one random one, which is German Infantry here. Okay, let's draw our initiative card. No effect, bummer for them. Let's see. So, they just got pushed out of Tobruk. They have a bunch of... This whole stack, right, is... Yep, is... Uh, um, disrupted, so... No good on attack. So, they have these... They do have this stack, or these units for attack. Which is a good... A good force, honestly. But, is that enough to take Tobruk? I don't know. Um, I'm feeling like it's probably not... At least not right away. So what I'm going to say is, let's go ahead. Let's do a first movement. Let's activate the units at Elegala here. So we have Panzers and Infantry. One, two, three, four. And I think they'll just stop there. 
why not, right? Let's go ahead and hang out there. Um, for a second movement, shoot, I don't know if they necessarily need to do a movement because they can swing around and try attacking. Mm. Well, I'm going to isolate an armor here, try to fight him. You know what? That's what they'll do. So, the Axis are going to go ahead. I know, always up here. A little, little stacks here. I don't mind it, but... All right, so with the second movement, the Axis are going to do a little little flanking maneuver here. Um, activate the... Cause you can do, yep, you can do just do it. So activate these two units as part of their second move. Move them here to Fort Madelone, and then move them up here to Salam to attack the seventh armor here. It's kind of exposed by himself here, um, which also could potentially start cutting this off. Although, again, the... Um, allies do have the Tobruk supply, although again, that it's this it's a kind of a limited supply on how they can conduct combat. Only one area away, you can't fund a you can't supply combat all the way heading into the west here. But all right, let's go ahead and have this combat right here. Let's go ahead and roll for the defender. Oh, almost I thought it was gonna be a six, a two. So for one defending unit, you add half the roll, right? So the two becomes a one. So that's five, um, and it's four and five nine nine to five obviously attacker wins also yes again you would check retreat for combat but because the defender is moving to two attacker is moving to two the, t the defender is not going to be able to retreat armor against armor defender can't retreat like that so he does take a loss so he is knocked out and the axis are victorious here in salam so a little bit of a quick reaction force with the tanks there can cause a little bit of mayhem a little bit of mayhem other than that, that's it for movements and attacks. Um, end phase, recovery. We had this stack right here. Let's get them fully recovered. Back here in Gazala. And I think that was it for recovery, right? All these were, were good. Yep, they sure are. Okay, that's it for the Axis half. Let's go to the Allied half of the turn. They're going to get their two units, reinforcements, 70th Infantry, and then, ooh, a nice strong fort here. Nice strong fort. They're going to want that up in Tobruk. So... They're gonna do, hmm. What they're gonna do is they're gonna go ahead and spend a movement um, in Alexandria. They're gonna move this fort, ooh, sea supply, do, 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 on a boat, on a boat, one at a time, to Tobruk. So the Tobruk beef up the defenses there a little bit. And then, let's see. I think they they don't wanna lose Tobruk, but they also, I mean, you don't like having these panzers here. So what can they do? Try to cut him off. No, I can't do that because there's no. He could. No, see, because if he moves out of the way to try to block a supply here, he moved there, would block supply, but they have to the end of their turn, they would have a straight shot into Alexandria. So he has to stay as a defender um, for sure. Oh, man. Did I have. Did I draw the card for him? Oh, shoot. I don't know if I drew the card for him. Hang on. Three, four, five, six. There should be three, four, five. They did not. Okay. We really need a card we can use. We really need a card we can use. Oh, no. No effect. Uh, okay. What are we do here, guys? Because we don't. I'm getting a little like, oh, no. Because we don't. Can't leave Alexandra wide open. Just got to leave him there. He, having been him here, I want to cut him off. But at the same time, we actually can't from just the way the... Movement is right here. We're not going to be able to get to Fort Matt alone. So we can attack him directly, though. We have one movement left, though. What's, what, who can we send to attack? We have armor, armor. But I don't want to weaken. I don't want to weaken um, Tobruk too much, though, because I want it to stay strong, right? So, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, this is a tough one. You know what? I think we're going to hold on to Tobruk here. Hold on to Bardia. I don't think we're going to launch an attack. I think we're going to let him there because here's the deal. What can he do from there? I don't think he can do anything at the moment, really. So, you know what? The allies are going to hold strong. They're not going to attack him. 
Mm. Yep, that's what they're going to do. So they're going to hold strong here on turn six. Um, so no moves or combat. Oh, well, they sent the Ford over, which he's going to go ahead and say, yep, he's he's at. And he's beefing up Tobruk here, um, fortifying it, just like he did historically, right? Um, go ahead and uh, end phase, recover and resolve combat, or resolve supply, excuse me. Um, everyone is recovered, supply, supply lines. From Alexandria, actually, do not reach. But again, Tobruk, sea supply, they are supplied. Um, oh, actually, and that actually makes sense. I don't think they would be able to attack because the sea supply... Um, coming from Alexandria, you can only attack one space away, which you can't attack two away. Um, because again, supplies cut off otherwise. Ooh, interesting, interesting here how this happened. Okay, so that's it for the allies. They're kind of stuck a little bit, but we'll see what that happens next turn. Um, that is the end of turn six, September 41. Let's go to turn seven, October of 1941. All right, so October 41. Um, the Axis get their two. By the way, this will be the last turn that each side gets two units. Next turn, they only get one each. And then nine, turns 9 and 10, there will be no more reinforcements left. So then they just fight with what you got on the board. All right. German anti-tank, Italian infantry. Perfect. Let's. So we're looking at the board. And then let's get our initiative card as well. A two. One additional move or plus two to one attack. All right. So make two moves, resolve combat. I literally... Finished up the Axis, or uh, excuse me, the, you know, last turn. Got into the Axis just as before I started um, record, because I usually cut between turns. I looked at it and said, oh no, I think the, the Axis, hey, have an idea. They have an idea that could win them the game, I believe. They could potentially launch an attack. So he is, he's not disrupted, nothing. He's got some supply. These two tank divisions, right? 15 Panzer. And the Italians going with them here. They have a direct line to Alexandria. Now, they only have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He has 4, 5, 6. And, but we have this plus 2 now. So, he's going to get a bonus, right, for defending. But at the same time, with this plus 2, this could be it. I think we could win the game here as the Axis and take Alexandria. If that happens, it'll be because of poor... <laughs> Poor strategic planning by the allies, which don't blame them historically, blame me, the player. But hey, that's how it happens sometimes in games. So let's, uh, I know I'm getting all giddy excited. I think I'm able to end the game on a decisive victory, sudden death victory. Let's try, because I don't know if anyone, I don't think anyone else can reach that far. Um, one, two, three. No, nope, aircraft can't either. So let's go ahead. First move, we're going to send our tanks rumbling east on the road. And boom, right into Alexandria. And for a second move, by the way, this card is definitely going to be used for the plus two to attack. Um, for a second move, can anyone reach that far? Again, I don't think so. Let's see. One, two. He could follow the road, actually. Two. So aircraft can't because aircraft don't get the road bonus unless they're with a unit, correct? Let me double check. Let's see. They can use the road bonus when accompanying at least one friendly non-aircraft unit or moving to a friend-occupied space. Oh. And moving to a friendly-occupied space. So hang on a second. So these aircraft, one, two, three, four, but the road, the road bonus, or one, one, two, three, four. Oh, they can do it. Okay, so with the second move, we're going to send the, get some aircraft support here, send them in, and they're going to be able to move because of friendly occupied space. Wow. And using this card, plus two for an attack. So that is four, that's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 versus six. He can't do it with the die unless he gets a six. A six will cancel the attack. Everyone goes back to where they were and their celebrations canceled. Otherwise, if it's anything other than a six, the Axis are going to win this fight and they're going to take Alexandria and the game's going to end with an Axis decisive victory and a completely different North African campaign. All right, well, let's see what happens. Oh my God. Okay, five. I thought it was going to be a six. It looked, I thought I saw a six flash up. It's a five. That means allies lose the unit. 
Alexandra is captured by the Axis, and that is a decisive Axis victory in here in Rommel's War from Derek Croxton and Worthington Games. Wow, that was fun. That was a blast. I mean, I'm telling you, this, spoiler alert, obviously a review coming up and all that, but um, this game's fun. It can, this game plays, every time I play it, it plays out differently. And it's just solitaire. And every time I play it, it plays out differently. Now, do the uh, allies make some mistakes there? Yes, clearly, you know, may, didn't think ahead of, you know, leaving leaving um, Alexander open like that. I just, but I was playing, I was like, okay, I don't want to lose Tobruk. I kept thinking, I don't want to lose Tobruk. Kind of lost sight a little bit of Alexandria, and that's what happened. So, hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough of Rommel's War. Hopefully, you guys know how the game plays now, um, you know, how the solitaire impacts it, which I think it does a good job. Yes, it's a two-player game at its core, but I... I I've been having a blast playing it solo. This is like my fifth game I've played. Um, and I will probably keep playing it for a while now. So, um, again, if you made it this far in my video, as usual, really appreciate the subscription. It's free. Just click that button below. Um, and a thumbs up on the video if you liked it. And then comment below. Let me know. Hey, you're going to get this game. You're gonna. It's on Kickstarter right now. Um, as with this being filmed. And a couple days after it goes up. Um, have you picked it up since then? You know, and once you get your hands on it, what do you think of the game? Please let me know in the comments below and let me know what you thought of my playthrough. So until next time, everybody, later.